Hello everybody! I did not intend to take such a big break from booktube, but I feel like everybody's schedules are kind of um, just weird and different right now. Booktube has not been like um, on the forefront for me, but I wanted to come back for this readathon because this is uh, one of my favorite readathons and I have been really excited for it like all year and I've been really anticipating it, so I figured I should check in and say hello with you guys and post my TBR for the Queer Lit Readathon. So the Queer Lit Readathon is hosted by Kathy and Rogan and a guest host every round. This round, I believe it's uh, two people. Um, it's Sarah and Rebecca from the Tea Hags. This is just a readathon dedicated to queer literature. There is a bingo board that you can try to fill out, do like a blackout, do one line, a row or column or whatever. Personally, I just get kind of overwhelmed by bingo boards, so I'm not really thinking about it but it is there if you would like to participate with a bingo board. This round is May 31st through June 6th, so this video is probably going up pretty close to the beginning of the readathon. So without any further ado, let's get into my TBR. So I have a total of nine books on my TBR. Pretty ambitious for a week-long readathon, but we've got a couple middle grade and a graphic novel, so like hoping I can get it all done. I always say that and I never do, but you know, it might happen. But let's talk about all the titles that I have on my TBR. Um, the first one I have here is Sick Kids in Love by Hannah Moskowitz. This is a book I've been pretty excited to read because I've been wanting to read something by Hannah Moskowitz forever. Never have gotten around to picking up one of her books, um, but my library added this one on audio. So I got really excited about that because I finally am able to read one of her books. This is a book about chronic illness. It's a relationship between two, I think, I think teenagers. There's a lot of books where teenagers will fall in love and one of them is terminally ill and this is not about terminal illness at all. This is about people who are living with illness and pain on a day-to-day -day basis, and that's a part of their lives. This is a relationship between a male and a female, but I believe that the male love interest in this is bisexual, so to me this is a great example of queer fiction that isn't necessarily about a same-sex relationship, um, because I just personally love seeing queer people represented in books. It doesn't have to be a romance. If it is a romance, it doesn't have to be a same-sex romance. I just really like seeing queer people in books living their lives. I feel like some people might say that this doesn't count because it's a cis female and a cis male in a relationship, but the male character in this book is still bisexual even if he's dating a woman. So that's really important and I really like seeing that representation regardless of the relationship that a character is in. Next up I have Verona Comics by Jennifer Dugan. The description of this book says, a funny YA contemporary queer romance about two teens who fall in love in an indie comic book shop. Again, it appears that those two characters in this book um, are a guy and a girl, um, but it says queer romance, so like, I have no idea what the representation in this is, but I'm assuming it's there because the book description said so. I read another book by Jennifer Dugan last year, and I thought it was fun. She wrote Hot Dog Girl, which was also queer YA. I really enjoyed it. I think that this is going to be just like a really fun, light, contemporary YA romance, and I think I'm gonna like it. I'm excited about the comic book setting. I feel like it's just gonna have like quirky indie movie vibes, but I'm hoping it'll be in a good way. I just feel like I'm gonna fly through this book. Next up I have Most Likely by Sarah Watson. This is a book that I have been seeing a lot of buzz about, um, but I also have been seeing some kind of like negative reviews coming out, so like I've heard some mixed things, but I am really excited by the premise of this book, so I have been wanting to read this. It is following four friends in high school, and I think that you know at the beginning of the book that one of these four friends is eventually going to become the president of the United States, but you don't know which one, and it is like about their journeys through adolescence, and like you watch them grow up, and you are kind of figuring out which one is going to be the president of the United States, and kind of how that's all laid out. I think it sounds fun. Like, I'm really excited to play the guessing game and, like, see if I can figure out who it's gonna be. It is written by the creator of The Bold Type, which is a television show that I love, so I'm excited about it because of that. I really, really love The Bold Type. Yet again, I don't know exactly where the queer representation comes in. I have just seen people shelving this as LGBT on Goodreads. I have seen people shelving it as, like, LGBT protagonist, so I'm assuming one of the four girls 
is either bisexual or a lesbian. That's just my guess. I feel like that's the most likely, but I don't know. It could be anything. Maybe there's a relationship between two of the girls in this. I don't know, but we'll find out. I don't think my friends on Goodreads would have lied to me about this, so... I think this should count. On the one hand, I did like a bad job researching this and preparing for this video, but also I kind of like to go into books not knowing very much about them and just like getting a confirmation from somewhere that I'm reading a book with queer rep. Like I don't, I, I don't really want to know until I just dive into the book where it comes in. My next book is Hard Love by Ellen Whitlinger. And this is a really short YA novel. I put this on my list because it is a Prince book. So I am trying to work my way through all the Prince books this year. And this is one that has queer rep in it. So it's about two friends, I believe. One of them is kind of struggling with his parents' divorce. Um, and the other one, according to the blurb, is a self-proclaimed Puerto Rican Cuban Yankee lesbian. <laughs> So they meet and I think form a bond through making zines together, which is kind of cool. I think zines are awesome and I think that it's um, really fun to see like that as a form of like a creative outlet for teens. I'm wondering if maybe the book has actual zines in it. I'm listening to the audiobook obviously. <laughs> I don't know, maybe I should try to look for a physical copy just to see if like the book has actual like um, zines that the characters make because that would be really cool to see as well. Next we have King and the Dragonflies by Case and Calendar. This is queer middle grade. Um, Case and Calendar has written queer middle grade before that I've read Hurricane Child and quite liked that so I've been excited about the rest of the books that they're coming out with. There's this one and then they also have another new release that also looks really good that I definitely intend to read at some point. I don't remember the name of it, um, but I'll put the cover up here. This book, King and the Dragonflies, is about a 12-year-old boy and um, I believe that his older brother passes away and then another kid in their town goes missing. I think maybe one of his friends. It's kind of about grief and then maybe a mystery of this missing kid and I think it is about one or possibly multiple of these characters questioning their sexuality and identity. Sounds like it's going to be very heartbreaking, but I'm hoping that it'll be good. I think that it looks like it has the potential to be super, super gorgeous. Next up, I have Crossing by Pytem Statovsky. This is a translated book. I think it is adult fiction. So two things that I'm a little bit scared of to be perfectly honest, but I'm hoping that it goes well. It's not super long, so I feel like I should be able to read this one. This is about somebody who is growing up in Albania and they're questioning their gender and sexuality. The main character and one of their friends um, end up moving to Italy because they feel more comfortable kind of like starting a new life and exploring themselves in a new country. And I think it's uh, kind of a coming of age story, but just like a very like broad sweeping story about these two characters throughout much of their lives. I, I feel like this is um, covering like a large span of time, but I'm not entirely sure. The blurb says that it also like includes Albanian myths and legends. So I don't know if maybe there is also possibly a fantastical element to this book. We'll see. Next up I have Moonstruck by Grace Ellis and Shay Beagle. This is my graphic novel. It looks really, really cute, really, really fun. Let me just read you the first sentence in the description of this. I don't know how else to describe this. It says, werewolf barista Julie and her new girlfriend go on a date to a close-up magic show, but all heck breaks loose when the magician casts a horrible spell on their friend Chet. I think that this is an all ages comic. It just looks really adorable based on the cover. Like the art style is so like just cute and um, clearly there's magic and mayhem and just it looks goofy and silly and just it looks like so much fun. I'm really, really excited about this. Next up, I have Final Draft by Riley Redgate. Riley Redgate is an author that I have wanted to read for so long, but finally I'm gonna do it. So this, I believe, is about a main character who is a writer and she is um, entering like some sort of creative writing competition. She writes like sci-fi fantasy and I think that a wrench is thrown in her plans when somebody like much more successful comes up against her and is kind of tearing apart her writing. I know 
that uh, Kathy, who hosts this readathon, has recommended Riley Redgate books so much. I think it's gonna be a good time. Finally, I think we're onto the last book. I so many books on this DBR. But I have Rick by Alex Gino. I read George by Alex Gino back when it came out and I loved that book so much. It was so lovely. So I'm super, super excited to be reading another um, book of queer middle grade fiction from Alex Gino. This is just a middle grade contemporary story about a kid named Rick. I think he's dealing with bullying in school and learning about his identity and coming to terms with that. I mean, I just expect this to be a really touching, sweet middle grade story, just like George was. And I just really appreciate Alex Gino and the work that they're doing to have actual like queer stories in middle grade fiction. The amount of queer middle grade fiction that's like coming out now is so amazing because that sort of representation really didn't exist I feel like when I was growing up not that I can really think of and I think it's super important for kids I love that this exists you all know that I love middle grade fiction anyway so like this makes me very excited so yeah that is it that is my tbr for the queer lit readathon I'm very, very excited about this readathon, as I always am. Love seeing what other people are reading during this time. Really don't know if I plan to vlog this readathon or not. Right now I'm kind of leaning toward no, but maybe I will if you really want me to or if it feels like I can, but I'm not sure. But if I don't, I will try to put together a wrap-up video of all of the books that I've mentioned here and talk about how the week went on the whole sooner rather than later. I would love to know what you guys are reading or if you have read any of the books on my TBR and what you thought of them or if you are planning to read any of the books that I'm reading for this readathon as well. That would be really really cool. That is it. Thank you very much for watching. I hope to see you all soon and I'll talk to you guys later. Bye.